everybody. We're now going to take a look at transparent male fashion. For those of you who have you been tuned in for an hour already, hoping for this moment and wanting to see maybe see-through underwear, it's not that kind of transparent male fashion. Uh, oh, actually, let me before I uh, go here or go there, as it were, um, I, I, this is a try something Portuguese as well as being some one of my favorite things, talking about raindrops on roses. This is one of my favorite things here in Portugal. First of all, though, I, I urge you to... <laughs> so um, a feature-length Try Something Portuguese today. This is Isto. Now, I think there are some amazing brands and products here in Portugal, as you know. Uh, uh, the um, Dr. Bayard suite, <laughs> Beral. You know, some of the things you've heard of, you may not have heard of Isto, who are a, um, a, a clothing and apparel manufacturer, mainly based around Lisbon. And I'm going to tell you the story of Isto now. And one day, Mrs. M, I want you to tell me if you would like to see me in these clothes. I would like to patronize this store in a good way. I don't mean in, in a bad way. Because <laughs> the word patronize has become, yeah. got such a bad meaning now, yeah, hasn't it? it? Does. Um, and, um, Oh, hold on a minute. I'm, I'm at the end of the presentation. I'm having to go to, hastily back to slide one here. Um, five, four. What's going on? This isn't Not working. Do it. It's just, it's, it's auto scrolling um, my presentation here. I'm giving you, oh, this is the most unprofessional presentation, uh, the likes of which you see uh, uh, people doing PowerPoint where they've got it in the wrong place and you get to see all the slides or well, your subconscious mind gets to see the whole presentation as they're hastily. Um, winding back. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do it again for you now. This this is so great because it's one thing, isn't it, to go to Primani and buy a 99 cent t-shirt, but the cost of that is felt elsewhere, isn't it? Whilst you've got a bargain, some poor kid probably in Pakistan or somewhere like that in a sweatshop has, has maybe made that shirt for you, uh, living a very different lifestyle to yours, in which you're lucky enough to be able to afford to buy a 99 cent t-shirt. So what I would urge you to do, um, if you can afford this or you want to, to sort of reprioritize your spending, is get with the program with Ishto. So let me just take the frame off the screen so you can see exactly what we're talking about here. They're a modern day essentials brand. I love them. I mean, the, the style of clothing is looking a bit like Gap, isn't it? It is, it is Gap-ish. Very Gap. Very a general American. Is that what it's called? General American products? Is that what Gap, Gap stood for, know. stands for? Ishto, modern day essentials brand for men, inspired by the slow fashion movement that uh, focuses, who doesn't like a slow movement first thing in the morning, that focuses on quality, sustainability, and ethical transparency. Now, you're not going to see that with many fashion brands. You're seeing mm. it with more, to be fair. But this is, this is I welcome this. Uh, it has three, soon to be four physical stores in London and is available online at ishto.pt. Their collections are produced with organic and recycled materials by certified suppliers in Portugal. How about that? If you've been mm. wanting to buy organic clothes, look no further than Ishto. I hope you like their style, who cultivate a fully transparent relationship with consumers. They know how much each product costs and what the markup is. Now, I find this very fascinating because you think to yourself, okay, there's a transparently made organic thing. That's flipping expensive. And they tell you why they tell you, yeah. you're not used to it. You know, the mass production has made clothes cheap, hasn't it? Generally yeah. speaking. Um, and they, they explain why these things need to be more expensive. So they maintain an independent approach to business. The company was bootstrapped from day one and hundred percent of the company is still owned by its founders. Well done. That's Easter, really quite impressive, founders. isn't it? And I think there's a couple of them there founded by three men. Yeah, that must just be two of them. Unless there's a very thin one standing behind them. Uh, the third <laughs> or guy. that they're holding on to. <laughs> or he's really small and he's in one of their pockets. But anyway, it was founded by three men from he's Lisbon. He's under the hat. <laughs> well, hey, uh, it was founded by three men from Lisbon. With, he's taking the photograph. Oh, okay. There uh, they're from well, Lisbon. Maybe he's the other guy on slide one. Oh, I could be. Maybe. Backgrounds in business, marketing and design. That's the perfect combo, isn't it, for Ishto? Their increasing frustration with the way things are made and sold in fashion retail led them to believe you've got to love a, a passion-based business like that haven't you that's based on a solution that led them to believe there was an opportunity for a fresh start that took inspiration from high-end brands but gave people something else yes the focus then became higher quality standards with an honest price point so that consumers who already know what they want get what they need mm -hmm. they couple that with the fact that they live hours away from some of the leading textile manufacturers in the world. Yes, here in Portugal, which really? led to Easter. 
we make fabric here in I had Portugal. No idea. I say we. I mean, woolens. You know that lovely wow. coat I've got from Truja Mosha? Yeah. That's Portuguese well, wool. Well, actually, I think we should feature them. I mean, we'll we've had several Truja pairs Mosha, of their shoes. They're yep. amazing. Yeah. The only problem Handmade with their shoes, shoes, I bought the wrong size, didn't I? But you've, you've uh, ended up inheriting those. Yeah. They were a bit too small for me. But they handmade shoes, really great value. Truja Mosha mm -hmm. as well, which we'll talk about one day. So they, uh, they led to becoming uh, a reality. That, that passion, that frustration led to them uh, launching in june of 2017 and that's it's very it is quite gapish and i love the gap look and what i like mm. about gap as well is i seem to be the right size for gap yeah. clothes as well that you know there are certain stores aren't there we think okay if i go in there and buy a medium it's going to work mm. and perhaps that will happen with ishto too that's their winter summer collection i think they're making a point there that there's just one collection they're not yeah. they're not they're not trying to excite you into buying the next thing um how we develop products and conduct business uh, is is what they're saying here what they're telling us about they don't rely on seasonal collections we care for everyday clothes that fit our everyday needs that is we have one single collection and try to make it permanently available so you know what you're getting yeah. um, based on what you want. And if it's a fit for you, literally, yeah. isn't that great? We look I love that. I mean, yeah, good ethic. it really pees me off, you know, how shops are always just trying to change, recreate. Change, change. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we look for fashion staples that could be better and work on those until we feel they are done perfectly. Quality over quantity. Each new launch is carefully planned to address the real needs of men looking for the best everyday essentials. The end result is a growing collection of organic and natural materials that is made to look amazing, fit perfectly, and last longer. And it's that Silicon Valley thing, isn't it? If you buy a set of clothes, you have to think about it. Mm. You know, you can go back and buy when the, the trousers or whatever are worn out, which probably they won't be because I think they're well made. You know what you're buying and you can just put the same thing on every day, can't you, if you want to. Everything has been developed over the past years from sourcing the finest heavy organic cotton available to prototyping and prototyping and prototyping right down to the finishing details that make these items feel different the first time you touch them. And there you see they go into what it costs. It's something that's retailing at 80 euros there. Um, they've got a labor cost, a transport cost, a fabric cost and the labels, buttons, minimal cost, the logistics and the material cost. They're telling you what it costs them. And then they're having to add all the other overheads in there. So true transparency in what you're buying at Ishto. And it helps you understand why it seems expensive, perhaps. But it's all got to be it's all got to be priced in. And they, they have to survive, don't they? Once the final product is available in the store, consumers can find out how much it costs to make, how we reach the final price, and how we intend to spend any net profit. That is transparency, isn't it? That and really then, is. there they are, uh, stores in Principe Real, which is a beautiful place to go to, let's face it, mm -hmm. Campo Doric, Chiado, and soon Amoreira, a huge step for Ishto. And they're currently genuinely excited about connecting longtime followers of the brand with new people looking for quality essentials transparently made in Portugal. And there's yeah. going to be a pop up in Apuro as well, I think. Tasteful shops as well. It's a nice looking mm. shop, isn't it? Uh, there you go. Although I want them to do women's stuff. They don't, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's, there's your cotton cashmere shirt at 120 mm. euros. As I've said, they'll explain to you why. Although we started out 100% online, we have grown into retail. And I think with clothes of that quality, and price you want to try them on don't you I, I i feel uncomfortable about ordering things online however once you've got your first one you could order the next one online because yeah. they'll be made to the same spec won't they yeah. um so they want to meet more customers and they want more people to experience the products and that's why they've gone online web still is website is still growing strong and it's responsible for 38 percent of global sales so there you go there's their markets all over the world isn't that lovely mm -hmm. uh, for 2023 they want to accelerate investment in the usa keep growing physical presence in portugal and increase revenue in key countries, uh, including Germany, UK, and France. Good luck to you, Ishto. I think you're doing an amazing thing. I love the colors. I love the styles. And I'm going to get in there and get me some of this gear yeah. at some point. Uh, I think I, I love their stuff. And I hope uh, others have been, I, it's been brought I, to their um, attention. Yeah, I'd like to see you in those skimpy shorts. <laughs> the, back, the swimwear or those, <laughs> those, those trousers? Those trousers. There. I mean, they look quite short. I can't wait for Joel Denort to go in and say, could you show me your pants? <laughs> <laughs> like, like he did in England. So that's a great video. I won't play that yes, now. that's an amazing the video. The video is beautiful. It's another transparent um, trader. That guy runs a, a restaurant. Yeah, and he tells people about what the meals cost him. And he's a, a inspiration, just like Ishto are. So there you go. If you want to get in touch, uh, you can do that. Well, why not go through their website, uh, ishto.pt. Ishto, transparently made in Portugal. <laughs> Boom. Now, I hope, Mrs. M, that wasn't too boring to do a presentation like that, but it seemed like the right thing to do.
I think it's really, I think it's really nice. You know, like we're talking, it's, it's you know, well, okay, here's where I'm at. Like today um, and like yesterday, like some people um, celebrate Samhain, yeah. um, which is, you know, the sort of pagan name for Halloween um, and this time of year and the Day of the Dead and um, the celebration of souls. I was really, I thought I was going to burst into tears when she was talking about the, um, the day of the angels, yeah, the little right. angels, yeah. Um, and one of the things that is said about this time of year is that the veils are really thin between realities, yes, and that you can tune into um, people from the past, most likely people from the future as well. You can you can just tune in. Like this is a time of mystery and magic and connection. Yes. Um, and it's interesting when you're talking about transparency, you know, being able to see yes, beyond the veils, absolutely. you know, because with shops and things like that, you know, everything is hidden. There's so many sort of secrets in life about how things are put together. So I really, really appreciate the um, ability to see deeper into that. Yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. And um, actually, the real reason why I was saying you pulled one out of the bag yesterday for our kids is because I actually don't like Halloween at all. I think <laughs> I, really, I really don't like it because... Yeah. Um, I, I just think we don't need to do anything to call in demons <laughs> or that kind of well, yeah. energy because like it feels like there are people that are naturally sort of traumatized year round. Yeah. You know, um, I don't I, I always think be careful what you wish for. And I think when you are dressing up in a certain way, um, you're almost putting on a mask. You're becoming yeah, Some, like, I, I, I'm not a big fan. And without sounding like a grumpy old man, which I'm going to now, but I'm in good company looking at the comments that are in the chat at the moment. Yeah, uh, There's a remake of Last of the Summer Wine going on in the comments at the moment. I'll come to those gentlemen <laughs> in just a moment. But, but I mean, it, I, love, it, it, I, love, I love how we do Halloween. Um, so, like, you took one for the team. Like, the kids want, you know, they hear about what it's like to the go house to they're house. They're marketed and, at. Yeah. yeah. And um, – Actually, I really like that you take them out just to experience something that might feel a little bit different. Um, take them into a different state, you know, like in the dark. And... I think it was mission accomplished yeah, from that point of view. The, we're talking about the thinness of the veils between yeah. life and death and going and, into and the I'd dark forest. And I'd love for us to talk more about our ancestors today. Yeah. They'll probably roll their eyes and go, oh, we know that Well, already. that's what you do as a kid. Yeah. <laughs> but you, but that, that shouldn't stop the parents yeah. from trying to share something with you, right, or teachers. I, I was talking about my grandparents to um, our eldest yesterday and realised he, he's never met my grandparents. They'd all died by the time um, I had children. Yeah. Um. Uh, and grandparents are so important. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Uh, the only likeness, apparently, I, I'm not sure if I read this out, um, the only likeness carving. I don't think it's a yes for doing a pumpkin shape like my head. <laughs> That's okay. So a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. Although some say I do have a resemblance to, uh, uh, is it my, which one is it of the ni mutant ninja turtles you think I look most like? Leonardo, possibly. Uh, thanks for your picture. But Andy thinks it looks more like an Ababora. Ab Ab Abobora, yeah, Abobora, yeah, yeah Abobora. The, the um, the 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 gourd of Portugal here, and look at this. I have taught Luisa. That's um of uh, that's James's, James's Luisa. Yeah, isn't yeah it? that's right. An American expression for the cashier in your anecdote, Nunya, as in none of your business, <laughs> none of your business. Okay, uh, and and a nice memory of giant slug wrestling, having mentioned Bayard there. <laughs> right. Um, the feedback for Ishto then. Listen to these grumpy buggers here. Seriously. Wow, that's expensive. Sixty-five euros for a scarf. <laughs> You're, You're having, having a laugh. laugh. <laughs> uh, and then by Randy, guaranteed the Portuguese workers that make them are on minimum wage. Oh, from by Randy. <laughs> I, I would I'm question not sure about that. I, I think they would make that a, a, an interest. Um, but it's, it's a, a good point. People are, you people are only ever on minimum wage because they're trying to sell a product that's cheap, right? Well, that's but right. If, if they're I doing mean, a transparent yeah. process. And, like, you know, people say, oh, that's expensive. Um, but you don't want people on minimum wage. Well, well how do you square, how do you square <laughs> that? How do you square that? Um, yeah, I, I want to pay less. But that means people are on minimum wage. Well, that's okay. I want to pay less. Um, that, that's that's not much cheaper than getting tailored clothes, which will fit so much better. Now, that's yeah, a good that point, is a Pete. good point. Good, good, good point. I what, wonder if they do a tailoring service as well. They they may well do. Um, and um, uh, Pete goes on to say, why not go to your local cobbler or tailor in Portugal? <laughs> it's a good idea. Tell us where they are, Pete. Yeah. I'd be more, as you can tell, I'd be more than happy to talk about that. Yeah. If people have got local cobblers or tailors in Portugal who can offer a service like that, let's let's get, mm. send them some business. Trush, uh, what are they called? Trujamosha. Trujamosha in um, yeah, Coimbra. They strike me they, as pretty um, good value. 
they make really um cool shoes well, i say cool shoes i mean what i think is cool is probably not what anyone else thinks is cool yeah but i've had this kind of um leather chelsea boot a homemade uh, and again i've not made it sound good um but they're falling apart now after four years of almost continuous wear <laughs> and they're made in such a way that they could be cobbled back together that's the other yeah, thing. They're not, yeah, they're not yeah. molded they're, plastic they or anything like that. They are the most comfy uh, shoes I've ever had. Yeah, they're amazing. Yeah, yeah. And, and this is like, why not go to your local cobbler or, or tailor yeah. instead of keeping three yuppies in their Lisbon flats? You, <laughs> no, is that are, in their Lisbon apartments what, um, or in their flat Lisbon shoes? <laughs> uh, it could be both, couldn't it? I imagine they, they've got some nice uh, Lisbon flats, both shoes and apartments. But Pete, come on, lighten up your giffer. Um, it's a no from me, I'm afraid. I understand their costings, but it's far too much to pay for everyday wear. Um, but th there, do we bring their prices down or do we boost up your um, everyday income such that it um, doesn't seem so much owing there, I wonder? It's, there's, a, there's a virtuous circle here, isn't there, that we could, everybody, you know, we don't need to shrink our way to greatness. It's not, it can't be done, can it? We can all uh, rise on a tide of people appreciating each other more, paying people a fair wage. And that could be a win-win for everybody, couldn't it? If we do it in the right way, perhaps. Uh, Michael Whitby, uh, also. Your here. Oh, excellent! <laughs> also, fabrics like Viella flannel, cotton goods. Uh, I think also made here in Portugal. That's lovely to hear. Thank you. And the labour cost listed was minimum wage. Oh, really? Okay. okay. Well, I, I I suspect, given their ethics, they're working on that. Um, it would it would be a big hole in their ethics if they weren't. Um, so. Um, what you can do, if you are genuinely and seriously concerned about that, um, you could go in and offer to pay even more so that the person who made the, the fabrics gets paid more than a bit of a wage. <laughs> yeah. No, everyday wear will last longer, um, I bet, yeah. Okay, oh, I think I've got to go. I'm getting the finger from Mrs. M in a good way. Um, actually, no, I shouldn't have said it like that. But a round of applause <laughs> to you. And uh, we're just going to cut short because it's 10 o'clock and it's time for the benefit, uh, the benefit join broadcast. Us, the join, benefit us, broadcast. <laughs> join us for the benefit broadcast. Okay, so hopefully we'll see you there. All right, take bye. care. Bye for now.